let's uh, let's go ahead and kick things off. So we will be doing uh, a live um, reading uh, a walkthrough of Amazon News and Insights for April, and then we'll be going to Q and A after that. Uh, so uh, we will not be recording that. So anyone that has questions, feel free to ask those at the end. Uh, we will be posting uh, the main portion of this uh, through our podcast feed, e-commerce deep dive. Um, all right. So Kyle, uh, thanks for being on today. We're talking about Amazon news and insights for April, um, 2021. Uh, we have Kyle, uh, quite a few, let's start kind of with the general category here. Um, first one on the list looks like Amazon capacity constraints. Yeah. So no major, I guess, changes or surprises with this one. Probably you've been working with Amazon for any number of years, but we're already seeing indications heading into Prime Day that um, there will be backlogs. There are backlogs. Amazon's really pushing to get inventory as soon as possible, as they typically do. But with Prime Day running, um, uh, expected to run, I should say, in June of this year, um, at this point, that's just over a month away. We're well within the period of them stocking up. Deal submissions have already passed, uh, seeing those backlogs with receipts, POs, um, delays, things like that. So really wanted to surface that. Um, again, it's kind of on trend for most peak periods, but we're well within that and, and brands should definitely be paying attention there depending on where their uh, looks like heading. In. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, it sounds like a related issue, but supply chain issues is next. Yep, similar and, and really a continuation from the past couple of months, but just servicing that to, to showcase that we're still seeing pretty volatile supply chain issues. It varies quite a bit from kind of brand to brand, category to category, um, but a lot of just disruptions, delays, um, issues getting um, imported orders through. A lot of those things still seem to be trickling out just in the broader um, market. And that obviously has ramifications with Amazon, depending on if, if you or competitors are affected. So it's an interesting thing that uh, we're definitely pushing brands to pay more attention to, even if it's not affecting them directly, um, because it may be affecting your competitors, which in a way is a bit of a competitive advantage with your approach to Amazon. Um, if you're paying attention to competitive inventory levels, um, you know, advertising participation, things like that. Um, but still seeing some variability there from a supply chain perspective across the board. Okay. Yep. Uh, good to know. Uh, next one, Prime Day Canada. Yeah. So there's some rumors around uh, Prime Day in Canada, just given the COVID situation happening there um, and the potential of that being delayed or, or not running into the U.S. Um, so another just interesting development with um Again, the ongoing uh, pandemic and kind of the, the differences and how that's affecting or being managed in the U.S. versus Canada and, and other countries. So there may be some, um, again, just changes there versus what's uh, moving forward here in the U.S. in terms of planning and timing and so forth. Are there any other countries that we know of that, that may do things differently besides Canada at this point? None that I'm aware of or none that we've heard any direct announcement for. but. I wouldn't be surprised, depending on, again, kind of the, the country by country impacts of both COVID and just Amazon's capabilities and backlogs and so forth. Hey there, I'm Dave Zimmerman with Orca Pacific. I hope you're enjoying the show. I wanted to let you know this episode is brought to you by Orca Pacific, a Mighty Hive company. We're a full service agency exclusively focused on Amazon with capabilities for everything a brand needs to succeed on the platform. From advertising strategy, content development and SEO, to merchandising and marketing, if it relates to driving and converting demand on the platform, our dedicated teams are leaders in this space. Our robust suite of services includes expertise on the back end as well, from operational support, demand forecasting and planning, to the right fulfillment options, and higher level strategies like long-term planning, channel management, and access to beta programs. To learn more, visit our website at www.orcapac.com, that's O-R-C-A-P-A-C.com, and a business development manager will get you up to speed on how we can accelerate your Amazon business. Now, back to the show. Next on here, add to cart button in search. 
Yeah, so this is a new beta uh, that we saw pop up on, it seems so far just um, sort of high turn or high volume consumable type products uh, and really just putting an add to cart button directly in search results. So obviously historically you search, you click through to a product, you add it to your cart, um, just making that step go away and having the option to go from search right to your cart for those items that tend to have high reorder um, or just more, again, um, ordering uh, cadences there. So we've seen this pop up with, you know, coffee, coffee pods, those sorts of things. Um, and just another step of Amazon trying to ease or minimize the steps to purchase, uh, which overall is, is likely a good thing. Uh, we've not seen a way to into that yet. So it seems pretty selective in terms of where it's showing up. Um, but something that I would expect to see um, improve, assuming that has you know stronger conversion metrics or something like that, and, and see that scale out potentially in other categories as they continue to test and learn to see if that does add value for uh, customers or for you know um, sales themselves. Yeah, that's that's super interesting. That's actually I haven't played with that yet, so that's cool. Um, uh, all right, next on the list, uh, more logistics related updates. Uh, FBA storage limits. Yeah, so this one's almost um, a good uh, logistics update. <laughs> this seems to have been negative ones as late, but uh, Seller Central has changed their uh, uh, inventory restrictions to move away from an ASIN limit to more a general uh, storage type kind of category type limit. So historically, um, you know, brands have always been challenged to send enough inventory of certain products in if Amazon's Pulling those at an ASIN level. Um, so there still will be restrictions, um, likely of similar quantities, but Amazon's giving brands more control over deciding of their sort of allotted amount of capacity, what products they send in instead of having Amazon dictate, you know, this item will take this much, this item will take this much. So it gives a bit more flexibility to make sure Amazon is um, stocking up on uh, what the brands actually want to lean into. So new product launches, priority items that they're going to push, other things that Amazon may have just had throttled because of their algorithm um, gives brands more control to kind of shift and uh, where that, uh, where their space goes based on what they want to focus on as opposed to Amazon kind of deciding for them. Cool. Um, that's great. Uh, Amazon Explore. Yeah, so this is an update that came through around their um, Explore and Experiences program, which is sort of a pseudo travel type platform. You could book um, like travel experiences and uh, tours and, and things of that nature. Obviously, the current landscape is is pretty unique, um, but they have rolled out a sort of and, brick and, and mortar. Just, just to explain yeah. that a little bit more, because I think for people that don't know what it is, it's like it's totally kind of out of left field, but like an example yeah. would be, um, you can't, you can't go to Italy this summer. So you book a virtual tour of the Roman Colosseum and you have a tour guide walk around with their camera or a video camera. And, and it's, it's real, it's live. You can talk to them, but it's like a virtual experience of a real world live thing. Is that, am I explaining that right? And it's paid. It's like, would be like 30 bucks for the tour or something. That's correct. Yeah. So they have that broken out for, I mean, all over the world. And this addition yeah. is really a way to do that same thing, but tie it to those local kind of brick and mortar shops, souvenir shops, even just normal stores that are in those locations and let customers really do that same thing. Like they could engage with the shop owners, look at their products and then ultimately buy it through Amazon and, and have it shipped from in that case, Italy or, or wherever to them at home. Interesting. Okay. Uh, that's wild. Yeah. Um, we'll see, we'll see where that goes. Um, cool. Uh, last one on the general updates before we get into to content and advertising, um, unexpected quantity overage chargebacks. That sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. So the latest changes on the one P chargeback front, uh, really just a, a modification to enforce fines for cases where Amazon receives more than they expect. Um, so an obvious case is, you know, a vendor ships more than they're supposed to. Amazon ordered one case, they sent two. That really doesn't happen too much, but it would certainly cause fines or penalize brands for doing that. 
Um, it seems to be more so geared towards um, ASN submissions. So the electronic communication where we're telling Amazon, you know, in this package is item F on BY. And lots of cases where just given the nuance of EDI and Amazon's uh, operational uh, processes, um, there's disconnects in, in that flow. Um, and this would penalize brands that are not transmitting that information correctly in a way that Amazon needs it. So if we yeah. tell them we're shipping 10 units, they receive 11, you kind of get a fine for that quote unquote overage. So um, that's being formalized and I think a fairly hefty charge back on a per unit basis. Uh, so something to keep in mind and, and definitely circulate among your, your ops teams um, to make sure that's you know accounted for. There's no holes in that process on your side to make sure you're communicating to Amazon correctly what you're actually show it doesn't cause any issues down the road. Yep, that's uh, that's very important. Those can add up quickly. Um, all right, onto the content and catalog uh, side of things. We have two updates here. The first is A/B testing product images. Yeah, so this is a new update to um, the A/B testing options available within the Manager Exper Experiments tool. <laughs> Excuse me, um, where before they've rolled out some options to A/B test, you know, A plus content titles. Uh, now they've rolled in product images, I believe mainly hero images. Um, so this is a great way to really just systematize testing content, optimizing content, really finding what types of images in this case work better for click-through rates and conversion, um, and really just a way to, to do that at scale. Um, you know, if you go back a couple of years, there was very limited options um, outside of kind of third-party tools or you know, uploading an image one day and changing it the following day, which is uh, not quite a, a proper comparison. So um, good progress there. Um, I think the benefit that we've seen from the A-plus and titles lends itself to this now rolling out for imagery and hopefully more options as we get a lot more flexibility for our brands to really hone in and, uh, and optimize to make sure the experience it can be and obviously the direct impact on sales just by increasing again conversion click through sure yeah okay that's great um second update on the uh, catalog content uh category yeah. is parent asin video uploads an update that amazon rolled out for registered brands where uh, now through vendor central we can upload one video to apply to an entire product family. So anything in the variables will have, you know, that same video applied. Uh, historically, um, videos have always been in, you know, ASIN to ASIN upload, or in this case, child ASIN to child I to a product family that may have five, 10, somewhat tedious to one, get those submitted and two, audit to make sure they actually showed up for all 50 of those. Uh, so it really just removes that uh, that step where that can be pushed for a parent and have that auto apply to all of the children. So pretty good way to, to save some time and bandwidth to just make sure those um, catalog details for large families are consistent um, and have those videos pushed out in just a much more streamlined way. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, awesome. All right, uh, we just have one advertising update, and this is the last update for uh, for this month. So, um, Kyle, Amazon pop up. Yeah, so this is more, I guess, a, a merchandising or, or sort of uh, uh, update as opposed to advertising. But uh, Amazon did roll out a brick and mortar pop up concept where there's a handful of stores uh, across the U.S where they're showcasing kind of a rotating selection of products that fit a couple of their bigger initiatives, um, mainly around their climate pledge and various sustainability projects. Um, so it's kind of catered around Earth Day. So it's to be determined if these will kind of continue or come back around different sort of seasonal or uh, those type of uh, Basically having a, a curated selection around that sort of theme. Uh, to pull in products that have those badging and certifications and really try to push those out and, and kind of um, give an added way, I think one, to promote those products and then two, just continue to test kind of their brick and mortar footprint, pop-up stores in general and a lot of those different things. So um, my understanding was that selection was mostly curated at Amazon's discretion just based on what items, again, have those badging 
supply, um, but yet another push in continuing their brick and mortar footprint, um, that type of merchandising, and again, really pushing some of those bigger initiatives that they've been rolling out around climate and, and sustainability. Yeah, and I, I I believe that that initiative is run through uh, through Treasure Truck as they're um, expanding beyond just the truck and going to um, you know to other kind of um, uh, I would say ephemeral uh, in in real life uh, concepts. So pop ups are kind of a version of that. Um, they are partnering directly with brands. If you're a high affinity brand, uh, I think there's an opportunity there. Um, to uh, to reach out to somebody and and um, and get placement, uh, especially around a certain theme. So, um, no, that's cool. That's exciting to see. I love the um, uh, more of these kind of uh, uh, physical retail experiments they're doing. Um, all right. Well, Kyle, that wraps up our updates uh, for today.